would increase your profit up to $40 per acre. Canola is usually the biggest dollar crop grown in Western Canada and has traditionally paid the bills on many prairie farms. With current market conditions, this has become tougher to do. Canola can be difficult to harvest, which led to the development of different canola harvesting systems. Swathing and using a pickup header has been the traditional method in most areas. Canola is swathed to protect it from wind damage as it ripens. Swathing is not the best answer because this kills the plant. Maximum yields are limited and green seeds are locked in when the plant dies before maturity. A strong wind will still trash your windrows and cost you big money. The timing for swathing canola has always been a problem. The Canola Council of Canada suggests that the ideal swathing period for canola is as little as one to three days. If there's a spell of hot weather at the wrong time, this often means multiple swathers running day and night. Finding enough equipment and manpower is a real problem. Most operators plan to cut 8 to 900 acres per season with a swather. A new self-propelled unit can easily cost $100,000. Over the years, many farmers have been able to push as many acres with one pusher as they normally cut with three swathers. On larger operations, you can eliminate three $100,000 swathers and two or three pickup headers at $30,000 each, a total saving of over $350,000. To reduce costs and get a better sample, some farms have attempted to straight cut Argentine canola. Leaving the crop standing avoids the yield and green seed problems, but it's even more prone to wind damage than swaths are. To be timely and avoid wind damage, the same number of acres per combine as per swather applies. Even a $20,000 European header extension won't stop wind damage in standing canola, and you'll need two or three of them as well. The Canola Council of Canada suggests wind loss in mature standing canola can often reach 30 to 40 percent in a five-hour wind event. One Eastern European agronomist measured losses of over 60 percent in early harvested standing crop versus later harvested standing crop. One operator who called us had had excellent results on his first three quarters but had lost over half the yield in the last two quarters. Preliminary North Dakota results with Palmer pod tougheners such as Spodnum or BioVale to prevent pod shatter have been disappointing in Great Plains conditions, so this doesn't seem to be a good alternative either. Now there's a simple way to increase the profit on your canola by up to $40 per acre without a large investment. The Yield Shield Canola Harvest System from Ag Shield Manufacturing improves your bottom line in several ways. The Yield Shield is the best crop insurance you can have for wind damage. It pushes the plants down when they're still green and growing. They are knitted into an even, windproof mat with an airspace underneath and the stalks mostly curved, not kinked. The crop matures naturally with little worry about the weather. Five years of plot work and seven years of field scale work have shown yield increases varying from 2% to as high as 27%. In the past seven years, thousands of acres were pushed by Yield Shield owners. Several farms have pushed over 2,000 acres with one $35,000 Yield Shield. The average yield improvement over the last five years has been in the 5 to 9 percent range. On a 30 bushel crop, this extra yield is worth 9 to 20 dollars per acre, even with low prices. If you start with 40 bushels, 30 or more dollars per acre is possible. Growers who harvested with yield shields have found they had a pleasant experience with buyers. Their samples had large plump black seeds and almost zero green seeds. One producer said he had buyers calling him to deliver so they could blend off high green count material with his super sample. Even 3% green seed can cost you $12 to $15 per acre in the food market. One of the crushers says he sees a lot of swath samples with 10% or more green count some years. Even if you have the right shiny new swather with all the toys, cutting canola can be a pain where you sit. On a good day you can get up to 5 miles per hour. Dealing with down or tangled crop and stopping to spread wads can be enough to try the patience of a saint. Unless conditions are perfect, the swather operator can have a really long day. Compare that to the yield shield. Owners report speeds up to 10 miles per hour, 
with most running 6 to 8 miles per hour. With pushing, you have a 10 to 14 day window of ideal timing. Not only that, but it is earlier in the swathing and it's usually finished before the rest of your harvest starts. Sometimes when conditions get really tough, swathing is just not possible. In several situations, the yield shield saved the day. An oriental mustard grower had a wetter summer than usual. He found that he couldn't swath or straight cut six foot tall material without major problems and big losses. A simple high speed push with the yield shield and harvest was underway. Yellow mustard growers usually plan to straight cut their crop, but if you have an excellent crop, it often won't feed properly at harvest. If it is pushed while it is still green, the mat feeds much easier than the bushy standing product. One of our Australian owners watched his coriander blow away every year. He found that using his yield shield kept his crop where he could harvest it. If the spring is dry, canola fields often germinate in stages. The first flush is ready to swath and the last material may still be blooming. By pushing it before the first flush shells out, the late material is able to mature and all three or four crops go to the bin together. Every fall many canola growers who swath or straight cut are hit with severe winds and some lose 80% or more of their crop. Yield shield owners have had no loss even with winds over 70 miles per hour. What's this piece of mind worth to you? The Yield Shield Canola Pusher consists of a rugged truss frame that will handle rough fields with no problems. During the last seven seasons we saw no structural failures even on high acre machines. Yield Shields are sized to match your combine header. Standard sizes are 25, 30 and 36 feet Custom sizes are available on special order, but must be ordered early. Operators prefer that the pusher width is 8 inches less than the header width to ensure that no material is missed by the combines. There are four dividers on each machine. The end pair leaves plant-free grooves for the header ends to run in, so the combine doesn't shell out pods at harvest. The center pair is set to match the tread of the pushing unit. This leaves clear tracks so that no crop gets tramped down when pushing. Each unit has a leading edge hydraulically driven knife to ensure that no plants hang up and build piles in the field. All dividers have a spring suspension that lets them hop over rocks or other obstacles. All four dividers are tied together hydraulically and stay at their proper height even though the body of the pusher is raised and lowered. The yield shield leaves clean tracks even in lodged or twisted crops. Gauge wheels inside each end divider are controlled on the go with tractor hydraulics. They hold both ends of the yield shield at the proper height even on side hills and where the crop is uneven. Current production models include a corner assist hydraulic circuit to permit easier steering on headlands and curved fields. The whole machine lifts on the three points so that headlands aren't disturbed when turning on the ends. Yield shield can be driven by any power unit that has a front category 2 or heavier 3 point hitch. Tires less than 20 inches have been used successfully. One obvious setup is the New Holland series of bi-directional tractors. Some Velmet models also have a pivoting seat and work well for the job. Reverse station fent owners have also been satisfied using Ag Shield dealers also have access to a front three point hitch kit that mounts easily on recent conventional or MFWD tractors. Mainline dealers also have front three points available for their tractor models. If you plan on unhooking often, a quick attach bracket for the three point is recommended. Again, Ag Shield dealers can order the appropriate model from our factory. Yield shields have been adapted to some swather tractors. If they have 20 inch or wider tires, a narrower set of tires and wheels is recommended. Some of our Russian customers have mounted the yield shield on their combines with reasonable success. If you need a hitch kit or adapters for non three point power units, please order early to ensure that the parts arrive on time. Pushing starts about two weeks ahead of swathing and even sooner if drought or high temperature exists. Transport is simple. 
AgShield makes a Yield Shield trailer, which includes lights for safer transport. The Yield Shield can be moved at highway speeds on the trailer, and the unit is well under legal widths for road movement. The header trailer can also be used. The main beam needs to be about 6 feet longer than the widths of the pusher. A full length trailer is needed because the Yield Shield is carried on its end wheels. Bunks to carry yield shields are available to fit most sizes of frames used by other trailer manufacturers. Yield shield bunks are completely different than those for a combine header. Yard stands are standard equipment so the machine will store anywhere easily, even if you don't have the trailer system. With no swaths to blow and no beaver houses to plug the combine, harvesting is straightforward. Simply drive the opposite direction to the way the plants were pushed. The cutter bar runs in the airspace under the mat, and unless the crop is short, lifters shouldn't be needed. Compared to swaths, ground speeds may be a little slower, but the yield is a little higher. With no plugging, acres per combine per day are similar to swath material. No need to buy that $30,000 pickup header either. When picking up dry swaths, you can have a significant loss on the pickup as the stems try to slide past each other as the windrows feed in. With the yield shield mat, the pods are in the header before the stock touches the knife. With rigid auger headers, material feed is usually smooth. If the crop is short, flex style lifters such as those from Schumacher or Inland can ensure smooth feeding. Draper headers have shown some feeding problems. The solution is a full length accessory top cross auger kit that is often needed for peas, pulse crops, and other fluffy material that doesn't feed evenly. For this job, the auger must reach into the outer corners. This keeps the whole mat moving toward the feeder house. Again, your Ag Shield dealer has access to our complete kits that are available for most makes and models of draper headers. When stripper headers are used, Dry seeds can be lifted off moist stems, allowing an earlier harvest, and with some adjusting seem to work well on push canola. Another big advantage to combining push material is that the thin mat behind the yield shield dries much quicker than swaths do after a rain. Faster dry down gives you extra harvest days during wet falls. You'll be amazed how stress free harvest can be. A less obvious advantage is that push canola stalks stay a bit tough. When they hit the cylinder, they don't explode and overload the sieves. The combine is much easier to set, and the sample is cleaner with less harvest loss. On the downside, a pushed field will be a little later to harvest because the plants are alive longer to completely fill the top pods. Several years of testing and field work have shown that a glyphosate application while pushing can speed dry down and control weeds in one pass. After you've shown this video to your neighbors, take it to your favorite dealer. Windproof your canola and get approved yields on your farm and take control of your canola harvest. It's simple. Contact Ag Shield today. Call 800 561 0132 or check out our website at www.agshield.com.